Okay, uh, so yeah, our first speaker uh, is one of the most interesting people I know, and uh, has three, reason. One of three people here. <laughs> yeah, one of at least three is what I said. Um, has recently started at the Monterey Bay Aquarium uh, doing uh, digital stuff there, and uh, today she's going to tell us a bit about how that all happened. Uh, please welcome Adriana Tan. Hi. Okay, so content warning, there's going to be a lot of fish and a few punts. And I've actually found out that that's required to work where I work. So in case you're thinking about doing that, uh, get onto like marine ponds ASAP. <laughs> um, I started this talk with saying, well, you know, 10 years ago, I was in FinTech, as in I was a FinTech founder, and I'll tell you a bit more about that. But now I'm really in the business of FinTech with lots of like actual fins. And I really like that now. Um, but before I sort of go into why that is, like, I want to sort of cast your mind towards some basic math, which is that we are a lot closer to 2050 than to 1995. Recently, I, I saw it somewhere, I think, on one of the social media sites, and I was like, what? That can't be right. And I had to, like, pull out my calculator. And it was true. But does anyone remember how wild the, like, early naughties were? I mean, I think this is... <laughs> This is like when I was starting to think about what I wanted to do and I knew it was going to be computers, this is what I had in mind. But, you know, in 2008, I was graduating college, not literally a baby, but close, and I was trying to figure out what path to take in life. And like a lot of really young, ambitious people at the time, oh, tech seemed cool, you don't have to wear a suit, you can still make money, I want to do that. <laughs> and I think it has to do with how, looking back, that, that myth of the hero in tech, right? You can change the world with the things that you build. But at some point, I think maybe a couple of years ago, I was like, they didn't really say like change the world for the better or for the worse. <laughs> maybe I should have asked. <laughs> but that's actually how I found myself in too many early stage startups and believed that some of these things that are terrible are actually really good for a long time. Um, and so, you know, long story short, did that, did that for a couple of years, uh, was successful in some ways, raised millions of dollars, had staff, built stuff that I thought mattered. Um, but I also didn't sleep very much. And I feel like this whole like culture of grinding and hustling, I just really started to question it, really because like I got really sick, like, and I was like, I don't want to hustle anymore, I don't think I can. I don't want to rice and grind unless it's for coffee. I have like many different ways to like make coffee myself. <laughs> and I did it so for so long. And I feel like this is a story that I hear a lot, and not just among founders, but among people who work in like startups and big tech. They're just like, I've been overworked. I'm just like tired. I'm sick. I'm literally dying. Sometimes I've heard that. And that made me pause and be like, well, why would I want to do that? <laughs> And more importantly, I don't want to make money for some asshole anymore. <laughs> so I say that I'm in FinTech now, lots of different, different types of fins. I'm sure someone from my work is going to look at the slide and go, that is like anatomically not correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find out. Um, so I now work in a place that was in Finding Dory. Recently we had a family night where we got friends and family to come to the aquarium after hours to come to the auditorium and we played Finding Dory. It was really nice. When I got my, um, my, my onboarding photo taken, uh, the, the, the camera was like a Hank the Octopus. <laughs> and so everything just felt like I was in Disneyland in a way, but maybe even better. Um, and so, yeah, this is literally where I work, but it looks more like this, actually. Um, and I think I want to pause here and talk about how I started working here on the 4th of November, and the next day, <laughs> we all know what happened. Um, and, you know, everyone is sad, obviously, and I think out here it matters a lot, specifically because Many decades ago, the entire bay in Monterey was overrun by sardine, by overfishing. Sardine factories was huge out here. Um, it didn't look like a place that anyone wanted to live or be a part of or be close. Uh, friends who 
are a little bit older remember walking down Cannery Row and just being like, this is terrible, it's like in ruins. Um, and it makes me think a little bit of how just 60 miles north in Silicon Valley, is it maybe that big tech today is sardine fishing <laughs> of this century, but also that maybe there's a path to rewild and rebuild. And so my time here being surrounded by people who care about the world, who care about the environment, has truly given me hope that when a few people get together, even if things seem awful, maybe there's a way, that's a path forward. And so when I walk past here on the way home, when, when I'm done with work, I just pause and look at you know, the birds, the sea life, and think about, I don't have to deal with sea lions anymore, except literal ones. <laughs> Um, and that's because for the last five or six months, I've been the director of product management at the aquarium. I was standing in front of this fish tank it's full of stew, stewhead trout with my mom who came to visit me 10,000 miles away. And she was like, I don't understand what you do. <laughs> but the fish look great, so good job. <laughs> and I think that's, you know, I'll take that. Um, this is my commute to work. I have a pair of binoculars with me all the time. One of the reasons why I got this job, I was told, is because I talked a lot about birds and whales when I, in my interview, and everybody just talked about the computers. <laughs> um, and, you know, we have office buildings along the coast. There are actually binoculars you can pick up and, like, look at stuff. I found out on the first day of work that we, one of our perks is that we get free whale watching, unlimited. So I'm planning to make use of that in the season. But the, the, the reason why I got this job was because about 11 years ago, I was working. <laughs> <laughs> I was working at, um, I was in Myanmar. Um, I was working with people who were like, oh, this place looks interesting. I wonder if there will be interesting, cool startups here. And I was there, and I just could not believe how the, the story of tech, you know, they keep talking about the promise of putting phones and computers in people's hands and seeing what will happen. And in Myanmar, and I was there, what we saw happened was genocide. <laughs> and reconciling that with people that I knew from somewhere else who were okay with doing that. Um, and so I think that set me in a path. It wasn't a path that I could have taken immediately, but it set me in a path of maybe I don't want to do this. Maybe I don't want to change the world. Maybe I want to just do things that matter and the things that I care about. And I definitely don't want to use Microsoft Teams. <laughs> and so I made a list of what I wanted to do um, around the time uh, of, you know, early COVID, a friend and I were like, hey, you know what? We're getting old. We've known each other for like 20 years. We should go do old people things together. And it was kind of a joke, but we went birding and we were the youngest people there. And we were like, actually, this is really cool. And I think that I can draw a straight line from that to what I do right now, because that journey set me on. I will go out, I will see beautiful things, learn about the world. I'm actually terrible at birding, by the way. So <laughs> like some of these older people will be like, what do you see? I'm like, uh, a bird. <laughs> but I, I just like doing it. So I just want to do things that matter to me. And for me right now, at this point in time, the things that matter to me are, I want to see animals, I want to see the world, I want to be around people who care about the world, I want to make puns all the time and not be like ostracized at work. <laughs> I took this picture on a boat um, outside of Farallone Islands. And just, you know, when you go out there for the first time, you're just like, well, the feeding frenzy, the, the nature that's happening around you in spite of you, in spite of the world, in spite of the bad things that are happening, I think it's just one of the most powerful, majestic moments of you are just one creature here on Earth. You And I feel like, for me, I want to make that count. Um, and I think also events of the last couple of you know months, years, I don't know, when layoffs started, um, have also made me feel like I think we're at a fork in the road with good tech jobs. 
I think we're starting to be asked to not ask questions anymore. I think we're starting to be told that just do the thing or the machines will replace you uh, or we'll find someone else who wants to do your job, right? And it feels hard to reconcile that, I think, for those of us who started working with computers in a time when it felt like it mattered, when it felt like technology was joyful and not shitty. Um, and so I think that's really what I'm sad about, that they've taken that joy away from us. And so I think that every type of organization has computer needs. Maybe they can't all provide the level of financial security that we feel we need, and that's okay. We don't all have to go do this sort of thing. There's also usually a lot more peopling, and sometimes that can be really hard. For me, I'm on the spectrum. I find it very difficult sometimes to really not just center computers, but I've learned uh, over the last couple of years that I care about what happens to people when computers happen to them. And so that's been a thing <laughs> that I've been just saying repeatedly that it's not good enough to just be about the computers anymore for me. And also, not every org is a good org or even a good fit, right? So sometimes you'll hear people be like, oh, don't work for the evil big corps. Yeah, sure, but there are lots of really bad like nonprofits as well. Um, and so I think we have to be equally critical. Um, but you know, what I'll say is that among these, which have been my short list of places that I might work, I've learned, for example, that museums, aquariums, and zoos sort of see themselves as being in the same scene, and they have their own tech conferences, and I'm really interested to go to like my first one this year. Um, I was also in local government for five years, worked on a lot of like COVID stuff, uh, you know, COVID vaccine um, information, notification systems, stuff like that. I won't say that they're all not evil, there's always bad somewhere, but I think what I'll say is that unlike some forms of big tech, you don't find yourself in a position where it's like, I have a small bad thing, I can make it infinitely worse. And so I think I'm okay with some of that. So for me, it was about finding your thing, but also you know, for everyone, we have to survive in these times, right? So. My journey to nature, despite always having been a city person, my journey into birding, into like looking at whales, into looking at fish, um, really surprised people because I think for a long time I was just so fixated on success means like making money, success means like building a cool thing that's like really like, you know, technical. Um, and so I, I generally think that friends from home who you know, knew the version of me from 10 years ago have just been like, they don't understand who I am or who I've become because I am a completely different person. But I think it does show that we can all be, we can all grow and we can all do the things that we don't know that we can do. Um, so my thing was this, but maybe you'll find something else that's your thing. But my thing also had an intersection with things I used to do in the past, which was, you know, I like science, I like technology, I like machines. Um, I was literally on a run or a walk uh, listening to a podcast about, um, you know, the deep sea research vessels that go into the Monterey Bay to like scan the ground. And I was interested in like what sort of technology they used. And they had um, people from Monterey Bay Aquarium and the Research Institute talking about that, and I was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if there was a job that I could do there? And I looked it up, and I was like, oh, there is a job, and I applied for it. And so this is why I do what I do now. So I kind of want to go back in time to tell this kid that I know a bunch of things I didn't know. Um, I learned that California sheep's head, a type of fish, can change its gender. I learned that floundering is very inaccurate because flounders can actually migrate their eyes. So that doesn't sound like floundering to me. <laughs> Octopus can't cling onto astroturf. <laughs> it's true. So every, in every place, um, octopus, if they have octopus at all, there's an a astroturf around the tanks. And that's the only way to prevent them to like not not go out and eat all the other exhibits. <laughs> and one day you will be required to make marine puns at work. 
And so I got off on, with a big bang. I actually crowdsourced this on Mastodon. <laughs> Thank you. I also wanted to work somewhere where it was socially acceptable to have otters in my background. Like, that's just kind of cool. So um, I'll just end with a couple of cute animal pictures. I feel like everyone needs them. Um, these are the otters at work. I was brought to go see them as part of my onboarding. This is an egg yolk jelly. I didn't know that we have jellyfish that look like egg yolk, but they're really cool. And this is what I call the sardine roundabout. <laughs> um, I like just going in here and looking up into that and knowing that the mission to conserve the ocean is not that far from what I started out wanting my career to be, which was that I just wanted to do something that would help. Uh, thanks a lot.